Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. You know, I got to thinking, we taped our first show back in 2000. This is 2006. We, we're like Bonanza. We've been on for a long time. We really are, and we don't look any different. <laughs> it's because we keep running the same show over and over again. we got a good show today. We do. We do. We're going to talk about leadership, something mm -hmm. that I know you know a lot about. Uh, there are three leadership groups uh, formerly in Oklahoma, Leadership Oklahoma, uh, Leadership Tulsa, and Leadership Oklahoma City. We were uh, fortunate to have a show about Leadership Oklahoma City uh, a few weeks back. Today we're focusing on Tulsa, so you people in Tulsa, go turn your volume up a little bit. We're going to be talking with three representatives of Leadership Tulsa, the executive director, a, an adult uh, representative uh, student from Leadership Tulsa, and a youth representative. I think it'll be very interesting. And we'll get to it. You're watching The Verdict. We'll be right back. For one Oklahoma-based company, success didn't happen overnight. Initially, the days were long, 80-hour weeks common. As we grew, we wanted to share our success and the ideals of corporate and civic responsibility found a welcome home. Today, we're the largest investor in the Sooner State and a source for exciting, new, high-quality jobs. We're Chesapeake Energy, committed to building a better Oklahoma. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You need this one to get satellite HD. This one's your DVR. This one's for local channels. Mm. This one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end data. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. The Cox Channel. More sports. More bands. More cheerleaders. More fun. Nobody does more local sports. And nobody does it better. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guests. We are really pleased today to have uh, three guests from Tulsa joining us. Uh, we're going to be talking about Leadership Tulsa. Across the table from me is uh, Wendy Thomas. She's the Executive Director of Leadership Tulsa, a native of Bartlesville, Oklahoma originally, now res resides in Tulsa, graduate of the University of Tulsa, and an adjunct professor at the University of Tulsa, and since 2002, the Executive Director of Leadership Tulsa. Wendy, thanks for coming and joining us. Thanks for having us. On my uh, left is Officer Jesse uh, Guardiola, <clears throat> a member of the Tulsa Police Department. Uh, he uh, is a, originally a native of uh, New Mexico, graduated in New Mexico State University. In, 19, in 2004, he was named top cop in Tulsa uh, by those who vote on such things. And I doubt that it was the uh, criminals that voted on that. But in any event, he was <laughs> named top cop in Tulsa. <clears throat> he is instructor at the uh, Tulsa Police Academy. He is a member of Leadership Tulsa. Uh, class of 2005 and is a candidate, as a matter of fact, for state representative from District 78. Uh, Jesse, thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Pleased to have both of you here. Wendy, tell us the background of Leadership Tulsa. How did it start? When did it start? 
We're lucky we're one of the first leadership programs that has started around the country. It was a joint uh, project of our Chamber of Commerce and our Junior League. And back in the early 1970s, they went to Atlanta to view a similar program that was just getting started, came back, loved the idea, operated for several years as a joint program. And then uh, in 1973, our first board was formed and we were incorporated as a nonprofit organization. So we're really proud of the longevity of our program. How many roughly have gone through the program through the years? Oh, I'd say we've had more than 1,500 people mm. from the Tulsa area go through the program. And um, we're now uh, just about ready to start our class number 35. Wow. What's your mission? Our mission statement is to identify and develop diverse leaders who impact the community through service. And uh, that's a wonderful mission that's brought us a, a long way towards helping to enrich the leadership base of our community. Now, Jesse is here with you today, and I understand that you went through the uh, 2005 yes, uh, uh, Leadership Tulsa. I yes, guess sir. it's called, class. Yes, mm -hmm. Describe that for our viewers, uh, the size of your class, what you did, what kind of benefits <laughs> you think you got out of it. The size of our class, uh, LT33, was uh, roughly about 35, 40 mm -hmm. candidates that went through and uh, the, I mean, to meet different people from all walks of life I think were some of the biggest benefits that I got. Uh, being. Uh, New to well, I should say new. I've been in Tulsa for ten years, but I got to see different uh, areas, different parts of the city that I've never seen before, and met different people, diversity, and different uh, neighborhoods that uh, normally most people don't get a chance to go through. And that was some of the largest benefits that I could take with me: meeting new people as well as seeing different parts of the city that normally you wouldn't see on a daily basis. Now, did you meet uh, once a month? Or? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, once a month. For, for a day long? For, for a day long. We started in the morning. We usually went about, about to 8 to 4, mm -hmm. uh, ballpark, just depending on how our day was going. But uh, uh, Wendy had us running from one end of the city to the other, <laughs> seeing different things. And that was the best part about it because it was never one thing. It was you had segments that broke it up. So you were in one part of the city one in the morning. You had lunch with certain community leaders or various organizations. And then in the evening, or I say the afternoon, you would go to another part of the city and got to see, like I said, parts that you never thought you would ever get a chance to see. You know, to mention what you did on one particular day might skew people's perceptions of what the program's about because you try to make it so different. But give us, nonetheless, give us one example of, of a day that, that, that a leadership class might spend. Where, where would that be? Well, we, like one day we, we'd start out in certain parts, like we went to North Tulsa and we saw the uh, uh, a part of the neighborhood up there, that's with YWCA, I believe, or it was an organ, it was a part of the town where you saw a mural on a wall that it was uh, painted by local artists that uh, they talked about it. Uh, some of the pictures were various that were just beautiful. I mean, you would never see this. This I would have never thought to go to this part of town to see yeah. some of this artwork. And then you'd go from there and you'd go down to the airport and meet with people that coordinated uh, events for uh, the Air and Space Museum that, again, uh, you wouldn't normally get to see unless you went out purposely looking for some of these avenues. But you, you didn't know they were there. You'd heard about it, but you didn't know yeah. they were there. And then to see them and to yeah. see just so many things that are available to you that are offered whether it be uh, the museum or history about the Air and Space Museum, the airport. I mean, we got to see different how an airport functions um, and the, the difficulties that are because of you know, such a large uh, industry, but uh, just educating you on different facets of life as well as organizations and, and businesses. Obviously, he's very enthused about some of the programs. How do you determine where you're going to send your classes? If, when people yeah. send you ideas, what makes one go in the waste paper basket and one say, yes, this is what we need to do? I'm lucky I have a whole committee to help me with that. <laughs> and what we take a look at is um, the things that have been uh, most impactful in previous classes, uh, things like the Port of Catoosa, which is kind of a secret uh, in Tulsa and yet such a vital resource for our uh, business and industry. We add to that elements that are most current, um, things that are happening currently, uh, the Tulsa Air and Space Museum it just opened a new um, facility at the time that we took Jesse's class out there. So we take a look for things that are current. And we really do try to get a diversity as far as um, the leaders that we present to our class and the places they go so that by the time that they've uh, completed the class, whether it's health care, social services, business, they've really gotten a chance to get a, a sense of the challenges and the opportunities facing our community. 
Do people apply, or is it by invitation only? How do you how do you get to be a part no, of leadership? Uh, most of our people come through is through nominations by previous class members, but it is an open nomination process. So people can go to our website and download the materials and suggest themselves. It is a competitive application process, uh, but we're very lucky uh, in Tulsa. We've actually started doing two classes a year. They start six months apart. They both last about nine months. But this has allowed us to accommodate many more participants than we used to when we only did one class a year. So um, there's an application deadline starting uh, just as we go through the next few weeks um, for class number 36, which will start in August, and then we start a class in January. So if people are very motivated to go through the program, even though it's a competitive application process, if they're willing to apply sometimes twice, uh, we usually can accommodate most people who are interested. Uh, the, of the applicants, do you, did you say you go through an interview process or not? It's, an, it's a, a written application written process, application and application. we have a group of community <clears throat> leaders that independently and individually review those applications, essay questions, letters of reference, the, those sorts of things. They come back together, and we try to create a class across a set of diversity, so different industries, banking, large corporations, small business owners, education, people uh -huh. in government and public service, and people on health care, so people who um, represent all the different industries important in our community, and then also people who bring diversity of backgrounds and viewpoints to our class. Jesse, I would assume that a lot of people use this as a networking opportunity as well, because I know you all stay in touch not only with your class, but uh, there's a certain uh, amount of camaraderie amongst the classes. Tell us, tell us about that part of the, the organization. Well, in the people that I've had, uh, the very fortunate to meet and to get to know we've become friends so we meet once a month whether it be after work or just for breakfast or a coffee and so forth because like she was saying before you bring so many diverse uh, personalities to the table and you get to meet people again that you would have probably never crossed paths with in Tulsa and uh, that's something that I've t I mean I've gotten to know people from the Tulsa Zoo and other avenues and that we sit down and we'll have conversations like they'll ask me things about the police department that I'll be more than glad to answer and I'll ask them things about the zoo or public speaking courses that they're a part of or other things that they're involved in whether it be graduate school and otherwise and share their experiences and things like for instance me considering going to graduate school, well, I have two of those classmates that are going through that same program or have gone through that same program, so they can tell me, okay, this is what to expect, this is what to expect, but I wouldn't have never been able to meet them if it wasn't for Leadership Tulsa. We've spent this segment talking about the adult section of Leadership Tulsa. In our next segment, we'll talk about the youth and opportunities there to be a part of this wonderful organization. We'll get to it. When we return, you're watching The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leading it fourth and seven on the Tiger, 46 yard line. 38 seconds on the clock, and the Tigers have no choice but to go. Wiggins in to do the kicking. Here's the snap. R.S.M. McGladry. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. R.S.M. McGladry. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. Come on, come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Satellite go out again? Yeah. Rain. But this is just as fun. Don't live in satellite denial. Get the reliability you expect from Cox, your friend in the digital age. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. 
We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. We're here discussing Leadership Tulsa today. We swapped one guest for another. You want to make the introduction? Yes, thank you. Uh, to my left is uh, Kat Roby. Robby. Kat Robby. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, a student at Broken Arrow High School. Uh, she was a member of the uh, Youth uh, Leadership Tulsa class in 04-05. She's a, a senior at Broken Arrow High School, uh, is a debater. She's uh, planning on uh, studying pre-med at a college yet undetermined, uh, but she is here to talk to us today about uh, her uh, view of uh, youth leadership in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, we're sure pleased you'd join us. Uh, great to be here. Thank you. Hey, Kat, in our last segment, we discussed the adult version of Leadership Tulsa, and one can assume that the youth version is similar, just with, with younger participants. But uh, tell us about the program and, and how it's different, and describe it to people who may not know anything about Leadership Tulsa as the youth concern. Explain it to them. What's it about? Um, well, it's really amazing. It's kind of trying to help us become better leaders as adults. And uh, one thing I think that really helped me, and I know it helped a lot of people, is to become better leaders in groups we're already in to you know go from being like as, as he said as a debater to go from just being just a debater to being a treasurer of my debate club at my school and being able to lead all of the freshmen along and um, Youth Leadership Tulsa we had a lot of guest speakers um, that came and talked to us about various things we had one man talk to us about how to write a resume and how to do um, interviews for schools and for jobs and we had other people come talk to us about politics, and we just learned how to be more effective in the society. And how is it different from you know what you might learn in school? Do you do you think it's worthwhile? Because you miss a day mm -hmm. of school to, to participate in this, and the assumption is, well, this is worthwhile. This is exposure mm -hmm. to opportunities and to people that you wouldn't have had if you had spent that day in school. So, sell us on the fact that this is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, well, I. It's definitely worthwhile because in school you, they teach you subjects like you learn math and you learn English, but you learn a lot of communication skills in youth leadership Tulsa. And I learned so much more about my community. I, I didn't know that there were so many nonprofit organizations in Tulsa area, and that there were so many people that needed a lot of help in the Tulsa area. And it really makes you a better, more rounded person. Whereas in school they just kind of push you from place to place, and you just leadership Tulsa. They want you to think about things and to think who you would help if you had enough money to give people um, grants and such. How many in your class? Um, youth leadership class? Yes. I think we had about 35. And uh, you are from Broken Arrow High School. Mm -hmm. uh, your graduating class is something like 985 or something yeah, like that? About right now, yes. Uh, and there were only two or three of you from your class in uh, youth leadership? Mm -hmm, so. so were most all of the other uh, high schools in Tulsa area represented? Uh, the, not just Tulsa. We had um, East Central, I know, Memorial, but there are also people from Berry Hill and Bartlesville and Collinsville. And it's, I think there might have been a person from Sepulpa. It was very, I mean, we got to meet everyone from everywhere. It wasn't just Tulsa and Broken Arrow. It was. Really nice. Well, how do you think uh, you benefited personally? What what did you get out of the program that you can take with you? Um, well, I, I got networking skills, honestly, because from Youth Leadership Tulsa, I applied for um, other groups that I'm in, like Junior Achievement and um, Camp Anytown, which is an amazing program to be in. And I met a whole lot of people, and it did help me become a more efficient leader, and it kind of helped me, um, I learned how to deal with people better as in a leader position, you know, break the news to them that something's wrong and, you know, without being rude. It was really helpful. Wendy, why is it important to have a leadership version of, uh, of Tulsa, Leadership Tulsa? Yeah, well, I think uh, if you look at the primary purpose of both our adult and youth program is we see that 
by investing time and um, resources in up-and-coming leaders, you have an opportunity to build the strength of your community because as people meet people, learn about uh, challenges and opportunities, learn about viewpoints that are different from theirs, their resources become so much greater. And as they get greater resources, as they see things they want to change in their community, they have people they can call on to help them when it's time to do that. And we've seen such incredible um, repercussions of having a leadership program. Every year we give our Paragon Awards, mm -hmm. which we give to members which have made um, incredible impact on community nonprofit agencies. And that's just uh, one anecdotal way to see the kind of impact that both the youth and adult um, programs have to help people both identify the things they care most passionately about in the community and then give them the resources to make a change. Now, do they get a chance in the youth program to visit <coughs> nonprofit organizations, see what they do? Do they get paired up with them, or, or how does it work? A couple of different ways. Um, we do have a whole day where we go out and visit um, nonprofit organizations that they that um, impact issues that the youth themselves have said they're interested in. So they go to the Day Center for the Homeless, the Margaret Hudson Program for Pregnant and Parenting Teens, Youth Services of Tulsa. I think, Kat, maybe your group got to go to the Performing Arts Center. We had some we budding did. artists <laughs> in that group. So the issues that they've identified. And then uh, during the course of the year, they took a look at those agencies and what they, ne they needed and gave back to them. And so at their final graduation, we had an opportunity to bring in organizations and they had uh, collected cell phones for domestic violence violence intervention and food items for our food pantry, other types of organizations. They collected things that those organizations needed and gave back to the community. I assume the programs differ between the adult and the youth. How do you distinguish if, if, if an idea for a program comes, what makes you say, well, this would be good for the adult class or this would be good for the youth class? Well, I'd say um, that the adult class is probably um, more heavily weighted to getting out and understanding the community, meeting community leaders. Um, we do some of that in the youth class as well. In the youth class, we probably focus a little bit more on skills building and training and opening up uh, their experiences to more of the leadership side, whereas many of our adults come in having had some leadership training. Uh, but we actually do both in both programs. So as far as the ideas go, um, great committees bringing many more ideas than we have time to implement. We also have an executive short course, um, which is another place that we can implement some of our ideas, and are looking to put together a one-day uh, Tulsa at a Glance program. So um, there's no shortage of great ideas, as you can imagine. Who provides funding for your organization? Yeah, we're about 70 percent uh, funded by our uh, tuitions and uh, fees for programs. About 30 percent of our funding comes from sponsorships from corporations and uh, support from foundations in particular our youth program is heavily supported by foundations and corporations. Well, Kat, <laughs> what did you have to do to become a member of the class? Um, well, we had to fill out, as she said earlier, a paper application. Right. I had to fill out all the information. Um, I had to write an essay of why I thought it would benefit me, and then I had to list everything I've been in since I was a freshman, <laughs> which is actually quite a bit. And then they based it off of that. Was there an interview process or was it just paper application? It was just paper application. What's uh, in the future? for leadership, tell us. Well, um, we're beginning to kick off a great fundraising project for our organization. We've expanded so much. It's um, an opoly style board game, all themed around Tulsa. Tulsa On Board is the name of the uh, game that we're going to be launching. Not tulsa Opoly. No, Tulsa On Board, and all it's right. an opportunity for all of our businesses and corporations to get on board with our organization and to buy a piece of property that will be on that, uh, that fun board game. And so we'll be selling those to the community in July and uh, so and we have a lot of exciting things ahead. Well it sounds exciting and I hope people mm -hmm. in the Tulsa area learn more about Leadership Tulsa and, and uh, do you have a website that people might be able to yes, go to? Yes, leadershiptulsa.org. We'll give them that information That'd again after the break, leadershiptulsa.org. Wendy, Kat, thanks very much for coming by and tell Jesse we, good we luck said, to you. said you. good luck as well. Kat and I'll be back with the final word after this. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. 
Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. Bringing out the best in each student, that is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities. Parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. You need this one to get satellite HD. This one's your DVR. This one's for local channels. Mm. This one's... What are we supposed to do with all this stuff? Got you covered. Oh, by the way, that old satellite stuff makes a great end table. That doesn't look so bad, right, honey? Don't live in satellite denial. Get the latest entertainment without the hassles. From Cox, your friend in the digital age. The Cox Channel. More sports. More fans. More cheerleaders. More fun. Nobody does more local sports. And nobody does it better. Welcome back to The Verdict. Let me give you that website so you can get more information on Leadership Tulsa. It's pretty easy to remember. It's leadershiptulsa.org. And we've got more shows lined up for future editions. Oh, we do. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking with the executive director of the Oklahoma Lottery, talking about the introduction of Powerball and the other things that are going on in the lottery uh, world here in Oklahoma and elsewhere. I think it'll be fascinating. We'll see whether or not the lottery revenues are going to be up to what uh, was projected. And if not, what uh, are they going to do about it? Uh, well, we think that will be an interesting show. And thanks to Wendy, uh, uh, Jesse, and Kat for driving over from Tulsa to be with us today. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, getting back to the lottery for a moment, you know, it was uh, heavily suggested early on that the money would be going for education and might help resolve some of the issues that education has been underfunded in the state of Oklahoma mm -hmm. through the years. And I know that's one thing that the media has latched on to, and a lot of the general public is, is the money going to get to education? And if it does, is it going to get to the greater needs? Well, it, I, I don't think there's any question but that it's going to get to education. Uh, just how and when, it may be a, a little fuzzy, at least to me, probably mm -hmm. not to those who have to do it. But uh, there's no doubt that it will get to education because that's a mandate. There's, there's no discretion about it. Nobody can divert it to anything else. It's absolutely got, uh, constitutionally got to go there. When we were urged to vote for the lottery, we were also told that currently a lot of Oklahoma's tax dollars were going into the other states and they were, people were buying lottery tickets over there. And this would allow Oklahoma dollars to stay in Oklahoma. So maybe that's another issue we can get into next week. Yes, and you can see where the uh, lottery locations are located in Oklahoma. Many of them are right along the, the borders uh, as well as throughout the state, but uh, to catch the border crossers. Look forward to that show. Also, I want to give you the information on our website, theverdict.tv. If there's a topic you'd like for us to discuss here on The Verdict, go onto our website, drop us an email, and tell us what you'd like to see. We'll see you next time. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.